Welcome, this is the uh, Tennessee Algebra 2 end of course practice test. Question number 54. Uh, Nancy made the following statement. The range of f of x equals ax plus b is a set of all real numbers, given a and b are real numbers. What produces a counterexample to her statement? Now, the first thing you need to know is what a counterexample is. It basically is a statement that proves that something isn't true. Now, they say that the range is uh, all real numbers. And what that means in this case is that all my y values are possible. And I'll expand that in two seconds. In order to prove it, I'm looking for an example that says, uh, no, it's not. So, or a situation where it's not. Now when I see f of x equals ax plus b, in my head I automatically think y equals mx plus b. I took it out of function notation and turns it into slope intercept form. So essentially my a value, so a in this case, would be my slope. The b value would represent the intercept, the y intercept and so forth. Now what do they mean by the word range here? Now range is the com is the, the companion or the component uh, part to domain. So you've got domain and you've got range. When I'm graphing, I always like to think of x and y, of course, because that's usually how we start plotting points in the two axes, or a x and y are the two axes. So uh, when I need domain and range, I just think of the abbreviation for doctor, which of course is dr. So really, when we're talking about domain values, we're talking about x values. And in this case, we're talking about range, so we're talking about all the y values. Now for doing the uh, slope-intercept form, I'm looking at something like this. And what they're saying for all real numbers being the range is no matter, as long as you keep pounding in values for uh, x, you can get a y value and it can go on for infinity. So if I plugged in a million into a slope of y equals ax plus b, if b is say 1. So it crosses the y-intercept at 1, so somewhere like right in here, and I put a million x in. Well, I can get way, way up in the y's just by doing that. So essentially I'm trying to find a situation where I'm limited. So let's look at all the answer choices, and I'm actually going to start from the bottom. J says b is less than 0. All that means is my intercept, of course, is less than 0, and it can start anywhere and still get all the way up to the top. Depends on uh, what your a value is, and you're unlimited in a line, so b being less than 0 doesn't really matter. a being less than 0. So in this case, what happens if my slope is less than 0? Well, every graph I've ever done if my slope is less than 0, it just means it's a negative, uh, it's a negative slope, so it just goes down. Still gets me all the way to the top and the bottom, depending on what number I punch in for x. I get the corresponding y to be whatever I want. So a being less than 0 doesn't matter. Uh, b being equal to 0 here, my intercept being equal to 0, simply means that the graph starts in the origin. Nothing else. That's all that it means. This graph is a perfect, perfect example of b being equal to 0. So it doesn't really affect anything. So that's out. So the only one it could be is a equals 0. Let's talk about y. If my slope is 0, what I'm going to end up with is a straight line. So no matter what my b is, if it's down here or up here, or whatever, I've locked my y value into one set of data. So it's always going to be, um, in my first one, it might be negative 3. It's always going to be 2 and negative 3, 5 and negative 3, negative 7 and negative 3. So it doesn't go up and down on the y-axis at all. It stays the same. So I'm kicking out the possibility that my range is the set of all real numbers because it's really only one real number. Uh, and the same thing if it was above, it, for the one that's above, so say this is plus 5, the y value is always going to be 5. So by locking in my slope at 0, I'm completely limiting my range to that single piece of data. So I can say that a equals 0 is the perfect counter example to her statement, Nancy's statement that as long as I have uh, f of x is equal to ax plus b, then the range is a set of all real numbers. That's it. No big deal.